Welcome back to Dimitri's Garage. I spent the day testing three shampoos from Adam's Polishes. I tested their Mega, their Ultra, and I tested their original formula, which I've always used for all of my wax tests. Now, Adam's claims that all three are pH neutral and that they will not strip your wax. And in fact, the Mega and the Ultra are supposed to be kind of the better ones for your foam guns and lances. The very first test we're gonna do is a foaming test where we will see if this basic ultra or mega requires less concentration before you start to get copious amounts of foam. The way this test is gonna work is we're gonna do one shampoo at a time. I've got my foam cannon canister here and I've got a little graduated cylinder which we're gonna use to deposit 10 milliliters of the shampoo in here and then we will shake it up, get it dissolved in the water and see how much foam it makes. And that'll kind of give us an idea of what the value is for the volume of shampoo that you get. You know, if there is no difference and they all make the same amount of foam, maybe you just buy the cheapest one. In between different shampoos, we're gonna use isopropyl alcohol and this brush to clean and test. So I really kinda wanna start with this Mega Foam. I have not tried this product yet and it's just intriguing because it's so liquidy. So let's go ahead and try to do 10 milliliters of this. I'm gonna be very careful in how I add it since it's so liquidy. All right, I think we've got right at 10 milliliters here and we're gonna dump it right into our bottle. Let it drain down for a sec. Now we're gonna take this and get it nice and shaken up. And then we'll just put that mark right at that degree there. That's honestly pretty decent. I'm really shocked that 10 milliliters did that much. That's 10, that is 20. And that is 30. Now this shampoo has slightly differing instructions than the foam cannon. The foam cannon says four ounces, but the shampoo says one to two. Three of these are right around one ounce. Let's give it a shake. You could totally get away with one ounce of shampoo using this method. We'll add the recommended two ounces just to see. I'm gonna go ahead and add two ounces. And six. We're gonna make sure we use the same setting. All right, let's go ahead and switch to the Ultra Shampoo. So here just is to fill your foam canister to approximately four fifths and then just fill it up to the top. So. Definitely less economic depending on how much you pay for the stuff, but we'll try our 10 mil first. Let's dump. That is turning nice and purple. All right, so that really wasn't very much at 10 milliliters. Let's go ahead and add some more. Woo, too much. And 30 right there. All right, so our last test was getting better. We're gonna go all the way to 60 milliliters this time. All right, we've got 60 milliliters in here now. So now we're gonna try the recommended amount. That is a lot of shampoo. Let's shake it up. All right, let's try this original blue. Been using this for a long time. All right, let's shake this up and we'll go for round number three. So that's one ounce, 30 milliliters, and I think the regular blue is actually a little better than the ultra purple. Let's use this little beaker and hopefully we don't make a mess. So we should have 60 mil when we're done here. All 
Okay, so it's 60 milliliters or about two ounces. I think this is better than the Ultra. So guys, we're gonna do the back of the bottle instructions, which are three to four ounces. We'll go with four ounces and call that 120 milliliters. I think at four ounces, this stuff is very aggressively foamy. So guys, we've done kind of the basic testing here and we've seen everything from 10 to 60 milliliters of each product, as well as the recommended fill. It seems like value-wise that mega foam is probably the best. Before we move on to the next test, I wanted to remind you, there are gonna be links to all the products we use today in the video. Those are Amazon affiliate links and I receive a small commission anytime you click one of those links and then buy anything on Amazon. It doesn't even have to be the product I'm linking to. Now it doesn't cost you anything, but it does help me run the channel. And of course, I wanted to remind you guys that I love it when you subscribe. I love when you give me a thumbs up and I love the nice comments. It tells me that maybe the content I'm producing is valuable to you guys. So do please keep doing that. Now let's get back to our testing. We're gonna be determining just how pH neutral these shampoos are. In our testing, we're gonna use a three to one ratio of water to shampoo. So we're gonna have 30 milliliters of water and 10 milliliters of shampoo. We're gonna use a stir to get it all mixed up. And then we're gonna be using that pH tester to validate. Now, in between different types of shampoos, we are, of course, gonna sterilize everything with isopropyl, then rinse it with more water. Now, as you can see, my water is relatively pH neutral, very slightly alkaline, which makes for good drinking water. You want it to be kind of neutral to slightly alkaline. Distilled water will actually often start to drop as soon as it's exposed to air. So it looks like we're gonna hit about 7.5, which means the shampoo is a little bit basic or alkaline, whatever you wanna call it. Now this isn't bad, 7.5 is within what I would call pH neutral. 7.0 is supposed to be technically pH neutral. Anything above is alkaline, below is gonna be acidic. I think that's totally fine. It's very close to what my base water is. Let's make our next one. So first we need 30 mil of water. Yeah, let's, let's do the ultra foam. We need just 10 mil. I think we're good. It is showing 7.0. And I can close that. And then we can place that in here and give that a little swirl. That is way more alkaline, 8.4. Make sure we're really giving it a good swirl. 8.5. Let's test the mega foam. Let's get 30 mil of water in here. Now let's pop in 10 mil of this stuff. Looks like 7.0 on the dot. And you really gotta kinda swirl it around, make sure that it goes all over that bulb there, the little sensor. So 7.8. So there we go, guys. Now we know the pH levels of these solutions. For a final test, I've applied this Carguys Hybrid Premium Spray Wax, which is like a polymer and carnauba infused wax to this panel. So we're gonna see if there's a difference in how the shampoos affect the wax. Now I'm gonna be doing something different. I'm gonna be using a brush and kind of spot washing and seeing what the effect is. So we're gonna start over here. Now I'm giving it right around a minute to kind of soak in. I would say that's still beating. Let's go for three. And we'll time another minute. We are starting to see it degrade a little bit after three. You can just feel how it's tugging on the towel now. It's hard to describe. I mean, if you've worked with cars when the wax is starting to strip off, you know what I'm talking about. The towel is just not gliding like it does on other parts of the car. Like here, it just glides. Yeah, you just don't get that slickness. And then compared to this side, see how everything's just disappearing over there? And here we still have this pool. So I'd say the seven worked out just like it did before in my outdoor tests. All right, let's give that a minute. It 
slickness is still here. That's a good sign. It seems to be beating pretty decently. Let's pour a little on and see how it slides off. Yeah, see, it's doing pretty well. Like you could tell over here, see it's all spreading and looking kind of gunky. All right, let's do number two. Let's pour some water on this. Still feels slickish. Kind of starting to lose some of the slickness though. All right, let's do number four. Starting to get real tacky. Yeah, I think it's almost gone. It's still working, but it's not great. Our fifth one, this one might be it. There's nothing here. Well, this is still real slick. I think I have to call this one done. So this part is still very slick. It's our last slick part. See how the water kind of beads? See how it makes a very nice bead and then just kind of runs off? All right, let's get our brush going. It's still good. Nice and slick. Maybe not quite as slick as where I didn't do it, like right here. The towel's not getting caught on it. I'm starting to get a little skeptical based on how that water's just sitting there. The towel's starting to feel tacky. I can kind of hear it scraping along the paint. It feels like the wax is gone there. Like down here, you can tell where the wax still is. Like there's a very nice line where the wax is and the water is staying above it. Once I finished shooting the video, I became really interested in the reason that the Megafoam was removing the wax so quickly. And I started looking at safety data sheets that Adams publishes in accordance with California law. Now I looked at sheets for all three products and the original had the simplest and the Mega had the most complicated. And what I noticed on the Mega was two interesting ingredients, dipropylene glycol metamethyl ether, which is an organic solvent, and isopropyl alcohol, which we know removes wax. Now, of course, Adams considers percentage by weight to be a trade secret, so they don't publish the exact concentration. It could be a red herring, I could be wrong, but they're definitely ingredients that I would find aggressive in a shampoo. I hope you enjoyed this video and I was able to show you the difference between the three Adams products. For myself, I'm sticking with the original formula. I think it's just got all the features that I want. I liked that it was foaming very strongly at four ounces. I liked that it is the most pH neutral and it did the best in my panel test. Now, speaking of my panel test, I don't think it is super deterministic yet that one is better than the other. For one, we only tested one wax. It's possible that that wax is more sensitive. So we'll really have to see and revisit that if you guys do like this. Let me know in the comments if this is interesting for you or if you want me to just kind of stick with the waxes for now.